Felicity Feline issues an extensive warning against facial abuse, aka D&E Media, and Duke Skywalker. I want to tell women that are curious about, or, or men, I'm sorry, men too, it, anyone that's curious to shoot this type of content, please think twice about it. I decided to take the new opportunities that were presenting themselves to me and I decided to get back into the adult industry. So I had shot a second amateur scene with a company that um, was a normal, normal company, nothing weird or rough and it went well and they liked me a lot. And then I got asked if I wanted to shoot for facial abuse and at the time I was single and I was very curious about certain things with my sexuality. I consider myself a very intense person. I have a lot of inner fire and passion. And sexually, I guess, I had asked partners in the past to be rough with me or choke me or slap me or spit on me just to feel what it was like to not necessarily that's what I'm into but I just wanted to feel that intensity like I desired that so when I got offered this I remember checking out the site with one of my best friends at the time we were sitting at home at my parents house just in the basement looking at all these terrible videos on these websites and I'm just like should I do this and you know, he looked at me and he's like, can you do this? And I said, I don't know, I, I'm kind of curious. I feel like I could handle it, but do I really want to go down this path? And, but I needed the money. And I was just so curious. Damn my curiosity, right? At the time, I mean, I have a completely different self-control now. And you, know, you realize as an adult that self-control is the best thing that you can have but it didn't matter at that point I was 21 years old and just confused so I agreed to do it and I knew what I was getting myself into when I walked into it and I took a train to New Jersey to Orange Orange was the train stop from Penn Station and I got off and I was met at a Dunkin Donuts by one of the owners and he was nice to me um, it wasn't anything weird or alarming initially and he took me to the studio and um, it was in this cool building I got upstairs and I, I met the male talent that I was working for and they were nice to me I mean everyone there was nice initially I mean it was very normal it was just day at, of acting or work or whatever you want to call it and you know they sat me down and just talking casually and then I started filling out paperwork and you know I signed my uh, they I signed all the, the the paperwork model release form all that and I filled out this form of my do's and don'ts they asked me very specifically like what I was willing to do and what I wasn't and I just remember looking at the list and it was pretty graphic, you know, and I'm, I knew it was going to be like that, but I just remember thinking like, oh, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. And so I really only signed off certain things like choking, spitting, um, vomiting, question mark, because if it happened or not, it, when I would deep throat, it would happen. I mean, I didn't really know what to expect, but, um, but I didn't want certain things happening. And, so when it started, the scene, and I don't advise anyone to watch this, like, uh, it, it sucks because I'm sure people are going to after this, but I don't want to get so in detail about everything of the scene, but I'll try to be basic about it, it so people get a general idea without you having to go watch it. It's, I don't, I, I don't even want anyone to support those fucking companies. So. It starts off with um, an interview type of me sitting on the couch, and I think this, I, I, I'm like, I have my drumsticks inside of me, like at the beginning, and you know, they're playing on the idea that I'm a drummer, and I'm doing some power diddles on the couch, and just being goofy, and then 
they start asking me questions as in have you ever been molested as a child or touched by family members and they start asking these weird questions you know trying to dig this information that they can use against me out and I just kind of remember smiling and saying no 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 you know I had really nothing to give them that they were going to use against me and I think that was difficult for them because they see this attractive young woman in front of them that actually has talent and brains and they wanted to break me and I almost looked at it as a challenge as if to say well I'm going to dissociate and I'm going to sort of mentally check out this whole time so you're not going to break me and that was sort of my attitude going into it I'm like I'm going to get able I'm going to be able to get through this and prove that I you're not going to break me so the scene starts and right away it's just push push slap slap split spit slut whore it was just this bomb of, of just physical abuse you know and I knew that going into that it was going to be like that but I mean it was just sort of whoa you know it, it really took me off guard and I didn't fight I was very submissive and I guess the appeal of even trying to do this type of scene was because I wanted to know what it was like to be treated like a rag doll because I had never had that experience really in my personal relationships before this and you know I was always with men that you know cared too much to slap me and which is fine I if anything I I admire a man that really respects his woman but I was always so curious you know what it would be like to really get beaten by someone in a sexual way and um, I was basically handed it to handed it to me you know on a silver platter and choked and you know then the whole deep throating started and I was, it was very difficult to have to roughly give oral sex without, I mean, my throat was just torn up and I lost my voice almost within five to 10 minutes just of the rough blow job. And I remember it took them a while to make me vomit. And that was their goal. Their goal was just to fuck my throat until I was vomiting and you could tell that they were almost getting angry that they couldn't do it. And when they finally did, it just spewed out, just vomit everywhere, vomit on my face, vomit all over my body. And then, you know, the jokes start. And I mean, I got called every degrading type of name you could imagine on camera, you know, with the added spitting and just demolish of my makeup. And, and like, I was, they sought out to make me look as unattractive as possible in every way. And that's what their goal is. They, they want to completely ruin a woman on camera and they will do anything in their power legally to do it. Maybe they overstep the legal boundaries at points, but that's to be determined by someone in law because I don't want to go there. But my point is, that's their mission. So I just sort of checked out mentally the whole time. And this, you know, the sex started. And I just remember there was a part of me, because I had never had a threesome with two males. And it was a very new experience for me. But I was essentially being used. I was being passed back and forth, bomb, bomb, back, forth, you know. And it became almost this like competition to them, you know, like who could be worse with her. And, it was really difficult, you know, and I was physically exhausted as well as mentally and emotionally. I mean, I was numb, but I um, just tried to mentally not be there and really disassociate, which, you know, I'm, it's kind of a skill that I've acquired over the years, being able to do to disassociate really well. But an admirable one, I don't know, I guess it's be looked at in different ways but in this situation I tried not to think about things that was going on inside my head I kept thinking to myself wow you made this decision and now it's going to be on the internet forever and this is going to be a part of your past is this really what you wanted but it was too late so what was I gonna do I mean I, if I stopped I wouldn't get the money I 
would have to cause a scene within a scene. <laughs> like I would have, you know, I'd have to deal with his drama and I was embarrassed. I, I, you know, I was already basically halfway through. I just remember I told myself, you know what, you're fucked either way, so keep getting fucked, because you're fucked. Yeah, it continued, and I tried to enjoy it. Like, I, I tried, but I realized within that scene that this is not what I want. And I meant to say this before, but there was this part of me, because I, I had been single, and prior to this, I had gotten through a really rough breakup with someone that I cared about and I had hurt this person. And um, I almost felt this sense of guilt, like I needed to be punished. And in a sense, this scene was a form of punishment for me. But for me to go to the extreme and to get punished on camera, knowing that this would be viewed by copious amounts of people that don't know me, and that only see me in this way. It was the worst form of punishment I could have ever given myself because it didn't just affect me in that moment, but it would continue to affect me for the rest of my life. So I thought about that during the scene. I thought about, is this the punishment that you needed? And to this day, I understand why I did it, but I wish that I had thought twice about that. I wish that I had thought, you know, you could have exercised this form of self-healing in a much different way. But it was too late. I didn't get paid enough, <laughs> definitely enough. I mean, I look back and I mean, I've gotten paid so much more for regular scenes than that shit, but you know, what did I know? I was so, I was too nervous to ask for more money and it's just stupid, so stupid. I mean, if that, that money is just so dumb when I think about it now, it, it's like nothing. So, but then they know they can get away with it, you know, cause the women that they go after to work for are young and sometimes desperate and looking for relief in, in some way. And they just, they target people that are going through things. They target people that are hurting. And I would soon realize this down the road. I did well, I guess, on their, their site. And he asked me, you know, would you be interested in shooting content for, we can make you a paid site? And I said, Maybe, I mean, I, I might be open to that, you know? I mean, I, I was thought maybe this was a way of me getting really popular and blowing up or w whatever you fucking think at the time when you... <sighs> he said, you know, oh, you know, we could, we just shoot content, I'll get the material, I'll, I'll handle the back work on the website, I'll, I'll get the video equipment. He was persuading me and I thought about it, but then I, and this was after the second video, because I was, like I said, doing well on their site. So he thought, let's just continue it. And the second time around, it was sort of just going through the motions again because I, I knew what I was getting myself into. I just wanted the money. I, it's all I wanted. I was moving to LA and I just wanted to fucking get some money and move out. So I was just seeking any work I could. I was ready to change my life and move and start a new chapter in, L in Los Angeles and get off the East Coast. and. I sold everything I had and I moved out with a, a, a suitcase. And I knew that, okay, like I decided to get back into porn and this was my way to sort of pave a new chapter in my life. So I was trying to just work with as many companies on the East Coast before I flew over there. And um, the second time around, it was easier in a sense, but it was just as, the same emotions coming over me. And I told myself after that, I could never do this again. Like I could never do this again. Then the owner offered me a sort of partnership. And after a few weeks, I told him, you know what? I don't think this is right for me. I'm moving to LA and I wanna focus on my own, my own content, my own work. I, I don't think I wanna be tied into this. And he got offended. 
and he got insulted as if I was fucking him over. And I told him I was very polite and, and I don't like to fight people. I, I, it's very hard for me to be rude to someone unless they're really awful to me. And I, I couldn't believe how, I guess, aggressive he got about it. And he ended up buying the domain, I think because I had told him, you know, I guess, yeah, I get the domain and then give it to me. And because I <laughs> foolishly had never bought a domain before at that point in my life. And I, the domain was felicityfeline.com. And he bought it with the intent that I was going to have it. And he then decided to keep it after I told him I no longer wanted to work together. And he created a fake blog pretending to be me, promoting his sites, put my social media on it, made it seem like I was writing everything. And I asked him numerous times to take it down, to please give me the website back, I'll buy it from you. He then asked me, he, he actually asked me, would you have sex with a dog? And he started asking me these explicit questions. He told me that you, he asked me if I was mentally, had mental problems. He, he, he asked, he, he was just unreal, insulting. And he then asked, I'll give you your domain back if you work for me at Exotica Expos. If you work at my booth and you know, make it seem like, oh, everything's cool and I work with facial abuse. When in reality, I was basically at the point where this guy is blackmailing me. And I told him, no, I don't wanna do that. Just please give me my domain back. And it ended, ugly and then I ended up getting on wiki porn leaks with my legal name harassing and trashing me and it was him it was him and him and the people he's involved with and that website ended up getting shut down but this guy was going out of his way to not only tarnish my reputation by using my domain but also promoting me on sites that were not even related to his website and he has done this to other people he goes by Duke Skywalker. He has harassed many people in the industry. He's unwanted in the AVNs at expos. He's an awful human being. And the years following this scene, he's continued to upload clips everywhere on tube sites, just promoting and, and pushing this. When I asked him to not do it and, you know, I, I don't own the content. So I'm really unable to do this. And it's a very frustrating thing when you don't have the control over your reputation in a sense, when other people have the ability to tarnish it by using content against you. So to sum all this up, I want to tell women that are curious about, or, or men, I'm sorry, men too, it, anyone that's curious to shoot this type of content, please think twice about it.